Thank you. Thank you all for being here. My name is Nate, Nate Scott. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be with you guys again. Some of you may have been on some of my previous webinars or heard me on the podcast or other things like that. So thanks for following these resources. I hope they're being, uh, they're of value to you. Today's webinar is going to be focused on, um, on business, how to utilize policies in your business, what advantages do we get when we use it in the business. Uh, and then also we're going to be doing a, a few uh, just kind of ideas. I, I actually had a bit of a hard time figuring out exactly what I wanted to do in this meeting because whenever I... Uh, planned out a business focused webinar how to use policies in your business um there's there's so many topics that I feel like we could cover uh that I felt you know it was just too many to to just do in one webinar so i'm I'm going to have to prepare some subsequent webinars if we see uh the need if we get enough traction with this one uh, and have individuals really just craving for more <laughs> so bear with me with that. The, the reason I bring that up is to say that it's almost going to be a little bit of a shotgun approach today as far as what we're going to do or a buffet style thing. I'm going to cover a few, a couple different topics. The, the main one I want to cover today, I'll do first uh, a couple of examples. And then I, I just wanted to brainstorm some ideas for how you could use it. And then at the end of the call, as normal, at the end of the webinar, we will take questions. I'll answer your specific questions that you have. Uh, and I would also love in that time, I think there should be time at the end of this. I would love if you're on this call and you do own a business and there's some things that you're curious about yourself or there's some things you've done that you'd like to share with the group, go ahead and type that into the chat bar uh, at the at the end and, and we'll be happy to bring that up. Because as I mentioned, there's quite a bit that we could do today that I'm just not going to have time to do. So the, the main thing what we're going to cover today is um, is how to save money on taxes by utilizing policies, loans in your business, run through some examples of how we can recapture things like equipment, and maybe even paying for your commercial property and financing that with your policies. And then we'll end with just kind of a brainstorm of ideas that I have to utilize uh, policies in your business concepts I think you'll find valuable. And that, that'll be the plan for today. So we can go ahead and dive in. I wanted to mention something right off the bat as well, that in reality, infinite banking, this concept is really the same, whether you're using it in your business or you're using it personally. In other words, the policy doesn't actually care what you use it for. <laughs> so in reality, whenever you're, um, whenever you're using a policy... The insurance company, for those of you who know this, they're not asking you, hey, what are you using this policy to do? Uh, are you going to use this in your business? In other words, the policy is the policy. And so what's, what's interesting is that whether we're using it in the business or for personal use, the same fundamentals apply. The ability to recapture money that we normally just spend and never get back, the ability for the money to continue to compound. And all the, the basic fundamental things of inventory making, they work on every transaction you'll ever do, making money on any transaction. However, with the business, there's additional benefits that we can create, especially in the world of taxation. Because all of us hate taxes. They are the number one eroder of wealth in our country today. There are, most of the time, if you own your own business, taxes are probably your biggest expense for the year. bigger than mortgages or anything like that. It, it all boils down to how much am I paying in tax. So one of the things we like to, that I'll, I will share with you is how you can reduce your tax bill using infinite banking. And in a subsequent webinar, we may also bring up how to use a policy to pay your taxes, uh, which many business owners have, uh, can take advantage of because our, our income our, is taxes are not taken out when we get checks. So we have to build money up to be able to pay for taxes. So it creates a, an avenue for us to be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in today uh, with, some, with some teaching, especially on how to use policies and help reduce your taxes, as well as start to recapture money that you're spending and actually get wealthy just by financing your own business. I find it to be such an exciting topic and I, I hope you'll, you'll catch it. 
However, what, what I'm going to do today, I've got a whiteboard pulled up. So let's go ahead and dive in. So whenever you're in business, we just get, we're, we're, you, you've been accustomed to paying for things, however it is that you've normally been paying for them. Some, some people in business, they build up money, build up cash, and they just spend cash and that's all they do. Other people, they, they have a mixture where maybe they'll, they'll pay for some things with cash, other things they'll finance. Either way, we, as business owners, we spend money on overhead, on expansion, on equipment, on property, whatever it is uh, that we're doing. And I'm going to show you exactly how to use policies to pay for those things. We're going to talk about some, uh, you know, some, some distinct things you want to be able to do and also why it benefits you. And it benefits you in more than one way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw, many of you may have seen this, I'm going to put down these three circles. These are the three entities uh, that we're going to be discussing today. They're all you, by the way. <laughs> so keep, bear in mind with that. We're going to put our policy right here. We're going to put you in the middle. This could also be your segregated account, for those of you who, who are familiar with that term. And then your corporation is going to be right over here. And so all three of these are technically owned and run by you. So it's a closed system. But you have, have had a company for a while, and we're going to say that you're, you're spending money, you're financing things, you've been paying for equipment and whatnot, and you've been using bank loans, you've been using your own capital, but you've changed now that you know infinite banking. So now we have money built up here in our policy, and it's time to go finance a new piece of equipment, let's say, or an expansion or a new a new property, or maybe we just need to cover overhead. I know a lot of businesses have been needing to do that in, in this current crisis, when we're airing this webinar during the coronavirus crisis. But with that being said, we're going to assume that we need $100,000 in the company. But we don't have $100,000 in the company anymore. Where do, where's the money at now? Well, if you're doing infinite banking appropriately, we hope that the $100,000 is in our policy. That's where we want the money to be. So we built it up in our policy. And what we're going to do is we're going to borrow $100,000 from our policy. And that money is going to hit your personal account. Your, specifically, if I have my suggestion to you, if you haven't already done this, is if you're in business, you, you, you really want to get a separate account, what we call a segregated account, where the only money that flows into that account is the policy loans that you're taking from the policy and then repayments that you're receiving from your corporation. Okay, so that's what's what we call a segregated account. It's essentially, we see it as an extension of the policy. It, it's uh, kind of a, a short-term tank for money to go in. The reason we do that is we don't like to mingle these transactions with your everyday checking account. So we set aside a separate account just to make the accounting easier, a nice easy paper trail. So I'm going to take $100,000 out of my policy. It's going to hit my segregated account. And I'm then going to lend that $100,000 to my company. And they're going to go spend it on, uh, we're just going to call it a piece of equipment. It really doesn't matter what it's for. It could be just operating expenses or whatever it is. And so we've got this loan from me to the corporation at this point in time. Now, we're going to treat this as a real loan because we've actually set it up as a real loan. So whenever you, and we can help you with this if you are a business owner. You really do, and I'm, for tax purposes, what I'm about to share with you, you want to have the, the loan set up with real loan paperwork. So we're going to make a real shareholder loan to our corporation from us, and we're going to charge the company interest, just like a bank would, just like an equipment financing company would. You know, we're going to charge us interest. So the company is going to start paying back this loan, and we're going to say it's at 10% interest that we're going to charge our company. Okay? So that means that right now, the company is going to have to send a check for $10,000 back from uh, the company back to us for this year. That's 10% of $100,000. So they owe me as an owner and also the lender $10,000 in interest to pay me back. And what's going to happen here, if I can share with you some of the accounting, because really what I'm going to share with you how to do is recapture money and deduct it. It's the, it's the best of both worlds. 
And so what happens here when the company pays interest to anybody, what happens to their income statement whenever they pay interest? Well, suddenly there's what's called interest expense on their income statement. So that means that they are writing off this interest. It's coming out of their profits. So your company, if it doesn't matter if it's a sole proprietorship, an S corporation, LLC, whatever it is, it now has $10,000, a $10,000 expense that it, that it wouldn't have had if you hadn't made this, this loan to your company. So let's just say for ease of, of number, that this company would typically earn $100,000. That that's what it, its net profit would be this year. Now that we've had this loan in place and it owes interest back to us, we are now writing off 10000 of interest expense that wouldn't exist otherwise. So that means the profit is only going to be $90,000 from the corporation. And remember, the profit is what we get taxed on from a, co a corporation. So uh, we've reduced the company's profit by $10,000, which is going to reduce the income it produces. However, whenever we receive, us as an individual in this middle bubble, when we receive $10,000 in interest, this is like an investment, is it not? We made a loan at 10% to a company and they're paying us interest. So uh, we are now receiving $10,000 of investment income because we just made an investment and it's earning us interest. So if we look at what's happened so far, we've essentially just created a wash in, the, in this transaction that we've seen so far, as far as a tax purposes go. Remember my, my um, analogy here, or my, my estimate, that if, if this company was going to earn $100,000, then that's how much we would owe taxes on, is $100,000 of profit. Well, now the company has a $10,000 expense so we're only paying tax on 90000 but we also have $10,000 of investment income right here. And so technically, we as an owner of this company, assuming it's a, a pass-through company, which is the most typical style of company that, that, that I, we would experience. Most of us don't own a C corporation. It would be a little bit different if it was a C corporation. But for your, your normal S corp, LLC, sole proprietorship, partnership that are pass-through entities, we're still just paying tax on $100,000, $90,000 from our, from our company's profits and $10,000 from interest income that we receive. So as of right now, it's just a wash. We haven't changed anything. But we are missing one piece of the puzzle. We, we have, to make this investment, we had to borrow money from our policy, or, or actually more specific, we had to borrow money from the life insurance company with our policy as collateral to be able to make this investment. So when we pay back, we have this policy loan of $100,000, assuming that the policy loan rate is approximately around 5%. It's usually somewhere between 45 and 5%, depending on the insurance company. Assuming this loan rate is 5%, then we owe interest back to this policy. And 5% of 100,000 is $5,000. So we've got 10,000 from the uh, from our corporation sitting in our segregated account, we know we're going to need to send five thousand a $5,000 check back to the policy. The, the, power thing, the powerful thing about this is that when we use a policy for business purpose or investment purpose, the interest that we pay on this policy loan is, tax, is a deduction to us personally. It's called investment expense. So we have now a $5,000 expense, in the investment expense personally that we are writing off as we send this check for $5,000. So as of right now, on a pure tax standpoint, we have a negative $10,000, a positive $10,000, and a negative $5,000. So what we've actually created, let's go back to the scenario. We own this business. It's producing $100,000 in profit. We wrote off $10,000. Remember, if we did nothing, we would just pay taxes on this $100,000 profit, correct? I'm trying to make sure I don't lose anybody. If we were just running, we just bought the equipment, we didn't do this loan, we just paid cash, we did it all without using our policy, the profit of this company is $100,000.
we're now creating a transaction that's really in this closed system. We own all three of these entities. We get to choose what we do with all three of them. So we're, we're, we're moving money around inside of our own uh, closed system here. And by moving the money around, what we've done is we've got 100,000 of revenue, or I mean, of profit at the company. We wrote a check to us personally for 10,000 in interest, which we expensed on the company side, but we then had to claim as income on, on the personal side. So we're still just left paying $100,000, uh, tax on $100,000 of income. But now we have this new $5,000 expense. So what this says is we've now reduced our income from 100000 to $95,000 by doing this. But what's very, but the amazing thing is not only that we're reducing our taxes, but what happens to this interest when we pay it back to the policy? Well, remember, the policy is going to keep compounding as if all this $100,000 was still in the policy. So the, the $100,000 is still working in the policy. And so the policy is going to be growing and it's going to earn. I mean, if you have $100,000 of cash value, you're going to be earning approximately $5,000 of profit, maybe even more, depending on what year it is inside the policy, of gains inside the policy. So we wrote a check for $5,000, but the policy grew on that money by $5,000. So we actually recaptured all the money we spent on interest and we were able to write it off. So we still have that $5,000. It's now just sitting in the policy and we get to write it off. I really don't know of anywhere else, honestly, that we can, we can have an expense and still keep all the money. And this is, we want to do this as many times as we possibly can. Now, the, a couple things to note here. I hope I, I've stayed with me, but as far as a tax Issue. This is what is distinct to using policies in your business is that we're able to reduce taxes through the use of policy loans in our business. That is a, the, the policy itself I'm going to show you is going to work the same and grow the same and make you a ton of money, just like it would on the personal side if we just used it for personal things. However, now we get this added bonus of a tax benefit. A couple things to note as we as we're looking at this. Remember. We only wrote a check for $5,000 back to the policy, but we have $10,000 in our segregated account. That's the amount of interest that the corporation paid us. So after we wrote this check for $5,000 back to the policy, which we recaptured due to the growth of the policy, we still actually have $5,000 sitting in this account. We don't want money sitting in somebody else's bank doing nothing. So the question is, what should we do? with this $5,000 that we have sitting here. We have a few options. The first option that most people think we should do is just to use this $5,000 to start paying back the principal of the policy loan. And that is, that's fine to do, but the problem with, doing, with, with paying down this policy loan is that every year that, we, that we're making payments on the actual principal of the loan, we're going to be reducing how much we get to write off. Because remember, our, what we're, we're, we're able to expense this policy loan interest when we use it for business purpose. So we just start paying down this loan as quickly as we can. That's not necessarily a bad way to use the money, but we do know that we're going to reduce our interest expenses, our, our interest expense, which is why many times in a company, when it makes sense, and, and, and work with us to, to determine the best practices, but it makes sense to do interest-only loans for periods of time. So in other words, when I make a $100,000 loan to the corporation, maybe I just do that at 10% interest only. And I just renew that note with, between me and the company every two or three years. And so it just spits out a check for $10,000 and we pay $5,000 back to the policy and interest. And we can carry that out, get max tax deductions for as long as we want to. But that does mean we have money sitting around in bank accounts that we don't want to be there. So we can pay back the loan, but it comes at a little bit of a, a it, it negates some of the value that we're creating with reducing taxes. Because any dollar you can save in tax is a dollar that you can put back in your pocket. So instead of taking this $5,000 and paying the loan back, we can go do a number of things. One of the easiest things to do is potentially go 
and add it back to the policy, not as a loan repayment, but as an additional PUA rider contribution, PUA rider. So if your policy has room in the paid up additions rider or the cash rider of the policy, instead of using this $5,000 in our segregated account to pay back the loan, why don't we put it in as an, an additional paid up addition rider contribution? It's still going to go to cash value. It's going to boost all your dividends for the rest of your life. It's going to pay for, it's going to increase your death benefit by two for one, three for one, something like that of what you're putting in. And so we get a similar effect as paying off a loan. It just actually produces more value and allows us to keep the deductions higher. Or if there is no more room, why don't we use the 5,000 or whatever the amount is, maybe to start policy number two? And then we can do the same transactions. We can continue, we can use policy two, we can borrow the money right back out, put it in the segregated, lend it to the corporation, have the corporation pay us back with interest and get additional write-offs. And so one of those two options, the premium, whether it's the paid up additions writer or new policy, the premium is the real driver of your banking system. Remember, don't see each policy as its own entity. See them as, as just a part of your system. So my nine policies that I own or the hundred policies that Ray owns or, or anywhere in between, they, they're just a part. You have to add them all up and, and see what the true power of, of the system. So, so I don't see them as each individual little policies. They are uh, The cumulative total is, is my banking system. It's my, my financing power. So what, what I'm suggesting here is to change the mentality from paying back loans. See, if we were not able to recapture the interest and we were not able to create these tax deductions uh, just by moving money in this closed system, if that wasn't the case, then maybe we would pay the loan back. Just like if you would get a loan from a bank uh, and you're just paying interest on it, why not pay the loan back? However, if we know we're going to get all the interest back and we, we can have additional tax deductions created by doing it, then maybe let's not repay the loans and instead use the money to build more policies or to increase the policies we already have. That way we can have more growth, more dividends, more interest being earned, more retirement income, more death benefit, all of those things. Because that's what the premiums bring. The loan repayments don't actually change your policies. They just replenish what we take out but they don't add any new value unless we can get the money into premium. The same thing could also be the case if this corporation uh, that we see on the screen already had money to pay for the equipment. If they already had $100,000 to pay for the equipment, if, you, if you're just getting started with inventory banking or, or you still haven't really you know, bought in completely, we still have a lot of money in other, people, other people's banks in, in your commercial accounts or personal accounts then we get a lot of questions of, well, why would I use the policy to pay for uh, this piece of equipment if I have the money to do it outside the policy? And we are, I may be opening up too big of a can of worms to really take care of right, right this second. But essentially, there's still value to using the policy and creating the tax deductions. But you are right. If we have $100,000 sitting in our corporation and we've, we've used the, the policy money to pay for the equipment, then now we've got all this money that's sitting around that we do need to get to work. So my suggestion, what would be in that case, let's see if we can roll this in to through PUA riders or through a, a new policy and then lend it right back to the company so you can still have the same amount of cash available to run the business. However, now we've created, a, a, let's say, a new policy that's going to be a compounding for the rest of your life and able to increase your tax deductions. So if you've ever heard Ray or myself say to potentially extend the loan terms on your loans, these are the, t the, the concepts that we're talking about, these advanced concepts, that it, it can be better, especially if you're in, in business or making investments, to focus as much of your cash flow as you can to pay for premiums instead of focusing as much of your cash flow as you can to pay for loan repayments. Because the loan repayments are kind of a means to an end as opposed to the premiums, which are boosting uh, your values uh, for in the future and creating more dividends, which means more tax-free retirement income down the road, which is most people's objective to begin with. 
So with this being said, this is why we encourage you, if you own a business, even if it's just a small business, try to find a way to incorporate your policy cash value into your everyday operations. Even if you don't finance a lot of equipment, just finance your expenses with the policy as best as you can. Um, and then you can operate it pretty well. I hope that makes sense to you. But I wanted to show you what it's like to put this into action as well. So I did, I did build a couple, show a couple of, example, uh, of examples. The first one we're going to do is, is for financing a piece of equipment. The second thing we're going to do is uh, a larger example where we're actually going to pay for the commercial property itself that you, your business may reside on and uh, show you exactly what it looks like and how it's going to work. So in this case, we have an individual. He was 40 years old. He paid a premium of $15,000 a year for five years to build out this policy. And you'll notice in many of our, of our examples, we stop paying the premiums once the policy is really well capitalized, once it can pay for itself and it just doesn't need us to continue to fund it. However, in reality, we don't suggest doing this um, because obviously we hope you continue to build wealth and it's never really a wise idea just to stop saving money. And that's really what's coming into the premium. The reason we stop the premium deposits in our examples is simply so that we can isolate what we're using it for. So if I kept paying premiums, the cash value would grow much faster than if I stop, obviously, because I'm, I'm just adding in a lot more money. But you wouldn't be able to see um, clearly, the, did we actually recapture all the money we just spent on this piece of property, principal and interest? And, and uh, also see how much tax deduct deduction we can receive with it. So we stop paying the premiums once it's well capitalized, just so we can show you the use of it. And so in this example, we paid premiums five years, $15,000 per year. And in year six, we went out and borrowed $50,000 to fund a piece of equipment. Now, remember, Whenever you are borrowing money from an, another bank or leasing from another bank, we really just want to get them out of, their li out of our lives as fast as we possibly can because we don't like pay making payments to other people. Anytime you make a payment to somebody else, that money is gone forever. We don't get that money back. <laughs> and so principal and interest, it's both just gone. With a policy, it's a little bit different. Where we start to think to ourselves, does it make sense to pay a policy loan back extremely quickly. Well, it, it can, but it might be better suit you and produce more value to pay yourself back slowly. That way you have more cash flow to start more policies or to expand the ones you already have with additional premium because it's those premiums that are going to increase the actual cash values in the policies. Remember, when we take a policy loan, it is a collateralized loan. So when we repay it, we're not actually changing the cash value. We're just replenishing what we took out. So the impact of the policy, there, there really isn't any impact. But anytime we pay a, a premium or make a little contribution to a paid up additions rider or start a new policy, we've changed the trajectory of this system for forever. We've increased it and it can never go back on itself. So it's very powerful to, to try to find ways to get more capital into the system uh, as opposed to just quickly paying loans back and what we call churning money, you know, borrowing and repaying as fast as you can because you can get like a hamster on a wheel never really seeing a lot of new value created if we just borrow and repay. So in this example, we said, well, what if we didn't repay this, this piece of property, this equipment back over two years or three years? What if we extended the loan term for 20 years and paid us back over 20, a 20 year loan on this? That way we can have more money freed up to pay for a policy. And the reason we might extend it is, hey, we may end up paying interest over time. But remember, we, we kind of like paying interest on business debt whenever it's back to us, <laughs> back to our policies, because we're going to recapture all that money, all the interest we pay and the principal we pay. Plus, we're going to get to write it off. So in this scenario, what we did, um, in year five, you'll see we actually had $68,000 of cash value. And we're going to pull out $50,000 from our, our account to go pay for this piece of equipment. We're not going to pay premiums again out of our pocket. This just means the policy is going to pay for itself. We're not going to put any money in 
Uh, we're just going to let uh, the cash value take care of the premium. We're not going to touch it. All we're going to do is start making loan repayments back. And instead of doing interest only on this, I did amortize it out over 20 years. Um, I, I just told you to maybe consider doing <laughs> interest only loans, but a 20 years is a pretty long amortization. So it, it works pretty similarly. So what we do, as you can see, is we start paying ourselves back, just like we would have paid somebody else back, $4,500 a year for 20 years. This is our repayments back to the policy. We could have paid it back much sooner, but part of the assumption here is that we're going to repay this loan slowly to maximize our interest expenses and knowing that we're going to recapture all the interest that we do pay. So $4,500 for 20 years from our company back to the policy, essentially, is what, how this is going to work. And uh, you, what I wanted to point out is two items here. You'll see that the year we took out the loan, after we were finished taking the loan out, there was $23,000 still left in the policy at that moment. So that's going to be our baseline. And this $23,000 grew over that 20 years to $184,000 of cash value. And remember, we weren't paying any premiums. All we did was repay this, this loan. Well, I wanted to see how much money did we actually put into this policy to repay it. And so if we take a simple calculator and we take this $4,500, move it off to the side, $4,500 times 20 years, we will receive $90,000 in, uh, in total repayments from our business back to this policy. So $90,000 is what we paid. However, we have 184000 So if we take what, how to find out how much profit did we make, we take the 23493 That's how much money we had as our baseline. We add in the 90000 that we paid in. So if it was just a bank account, we would have had 23000 in a balance to start with, and we would have added 90000 of deposits. We'd be left with 113493 but if I take away the 184, 275 that we have in the account, you'll see that the difference, this shows that we made a pro, we got all 90,000 back plus a $70,000 profit in our, um, in our policy. In other words, we had 23,000 plus 90 is 113,000. Take that away from 184, you have right at $70,000 difference. So we not only got all the $50,000 that we borrowed back in our pocket, the $40,000 of interest that we paid, I may have skipped a step there, I'm sorry. Uh, when, if we took out 50,000 and we paid back 90,000, then that shows that we, we borrowed 50, so we paid back the 50, that's called principal of the loan, which would then mean the other 40,000 is the interest. So we paid $40,000 of interest. We got all that back, plus we made a profit of $70,000. Do we owe any tax on any of this profit? No, it's in a policy. So we got back all the principal, all the interest. We made $70,000. But what happened to this $40,000 of interest we paid back to the policy? That's an expense. So not only did we get all the money back, we were able to re we were able to deduct the forty thousand dollars as interest expense. So you can start to see. I like to call this getting wealthy just by <laughs> just by living life, running the business, doing the things we were already going to do. But we have it all in a closed system, which means we control every aspect. We control the business. We control our segregated account. We control the policy. So we're able to get pretty wealthy just by financing the things that we're going to need to pay for anyway. That's the power of, of banking, as we've always said. Another example in a similar light, maybe on a little bit of a bigger tune, is to use the policy that we've, we've built up to actually take over the commercial mortgage on our building. And so obviously these numbers are going to be a little bit bigger, but it, can, and it just depends on how long and how large the commercial property is will determine how much you need to put towards it. So in this case, we have an individual, he's also in his 40s, and he's going to put in a larger premium, in this case, $130,000 for five years. Now, the reason we did that is because we wanted to get, this was a real life example, 
we wanted to be able to take over $550,000 in a mortgage for this individual that we were working with. And we said, well, if we want to get there in five years, it's gonna, we're going to need to pay approximately $130,000 a year in premiums to be able to make sure that we have enough cash value to, to take over the mortgage completely from, from the finance company. If we wanted to put in less money in deposits, we, we certainly could. It would have just taken a few more years to build up the amount of money needed to pay off the mortgage. It really doesn't matter how soon or how far off we can pay it off. The key is that we just want to get it owned inside of our own system as opposed to inside of the bank many, many times. And so what we did is we built up this policy. We, we built it up until we had right at $586,000 in cash value. And we're going to take a loan from our policy to pay off this commercial note of $550,000. We'll just wipe it out. And we're going to pay ourselves back or our policy back over the next 30 years. Now, in this guy's case, I think I want to say the commercial mortgage was right at about 6% interest at the time. But remember, whenever you're the banker, we like to charge ourselves extra interest for the reasons we showed on that previous example uh, when I drew it through. So we actually, he raised the interest back to himself to 9%. And there was actually a finance company in between where that segregated account was. Uh, whenever you get to these larger numbers, it can make sense to actually create a company to manage the loans you're making to your business. There can be some additional tax benefits, but I'm, that's not really in the scope of this call, but it can be pretty fun. So that's one of the reasons why we, we, we increased the rate to him. Remember, he's going to get all the money back. It doesn't matter if he pays it at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%. If we're going to get all the money back and, and be able to use it, it doesn't really matter what the interest rate is. All we're trying to do is play the tax game correctly in a, in a way that makes sense without going too crazy. So that's what we did. And so if we were to take that loan out, we're looking at a, a monthly payment of $4,425. If we multiply that by 12, we get right at 53,105 per year as what we're paying back to the policy. And so we start making those payments back over time. We stopped the premium on this example. Once again, uh, we stopped funding the policy from our pocket. And the reason we did that was just to, to make it uh, simpler to follow along with and to focus on how much did taking over this mortgage really generate for us. And we repaid it over 30 years. Once again, I'll make a note of a number, the 87,837 that we had the year we took over the mortgage. That's really our baseline. It's not zero. We had some money left over when we took over the, the mortgage. That's the baseline of starting, starting out. So we had 87,000 of cash value to start with in year six. And we go down 30 years. By the time he completely had paid it off, you'll notice that he's over, it's $3.6 million of cash value and a $5.4 million of debt. And all we did was pay five premiums of $130,000. And then we took over the commercial loan for his property. And so to go from $87,000 of starting cash value to $3.6 million, the total amount we actually totaled it for us, the $53,105 for 30 years, the total amount of principal and interest we paid was almost $1.6 million. It was $1,593,000 of principal and interest. So if we take the $1,593,000 and we add in the $87,837 and subtract it from how much money we had left over when we were finished, the cash value of $3.6 million, we actually make a profit in this example of $1,928,000. That's more... That, 1928000 more than what we've put in, more than our cash value was when we started the loan and more than what we paid in principal and interest. All of that 100% tax-free to us. Heck, he's got $3.6 million. We're, he's doing okay for retirement at that point. <laughs> All from paying five premiums, substantial premiums, and then taking over one commercial property. What would have happened to these numbers if we had continued to finance additional things in this business uh, equipment, uh, just general expansion, uh, overhead, whatever it is, paying ourselves back at seven, eight, nine percent interest, all these cash value numbers would just be higher and higher and higher the more that we used it, especially as I mentioned, if we're paying ourselves back a good rate of interest. So we made $1.9 million of tax free profit above any money that we would have spent or sent to that. 
to the policy itself. And on top of that, remember, our loan was only for $550,000. That was the loan principal. So that means we paid about a million dollars in interest. The majority of that would be a deduction to us, a large tax write-offs over those 30 years. The reason not all of this million dollar difference, the reason that it's not all deductible uh, at the end of the day is, is because we charge ourselves a higher rate of interest than what the insurance company policy loan would be charging. So if that's around 5% to the policy loan, that's really the net amount of interest we can write off. If we pay extra interest to the policy, it's not actually a, a deduction. Like in other words, if I pay the 5% interest to the policy and I, and I add some extra to the paid up additions writer, that PUA writer contribution in my head might be extra interest, but on uh, you know accounting documentation and things like that, it doesn't actually qualify as an interest expense to you personally when you make that contribution. The business itself would have, would, would have been able to write off all million but we would have just had to claim a portion of that, whatever the profit was. But it is true if you have an intermediary finance company to handle this transaction, a lot of times you can kind of find some expenses to, <laughs> to offset it, but I'm not going to get too much into detail on that. But either way, what a couple of things I wanted to note with this is that once again, we're trying to finance as much as we can from policies in ways that make sense. You can't just use a policy willy-nilly and just hope it makes sense. You, you want to have a strategy behind it, and you want to make sure that all the transactions you're doing <laughs> are promoting growth and ex accelerating the growth of the policies instead of just staying status quo. So finding ways to do that is the fun part. That's what we're here to help with. And we can create a really solid, <laughs> quote-unquote, retirement without ever taking any risk or without any... Uh, taxation whatsoever owed just by managing our own business finances through policies. So I hope these examples help solidify that. As we're running out of time, I wanted just to mention a few a few uses for policies or a few uh, reasons to to build them out and use them that we didn't really get to cover today. But one of the most obvious ones is <coughs> instead of financing equipment or things, is just to have liquid access to money, liquid money. <laughs> Excuse me. In today's day and age with the coronavirus, I mean, the companies who had capital are doing well. The companies who didn't are being stuck. Um, and that's the, the real power of, of, of financial autonomy, independence, is those who have money get to write the rules. And so I, I find it so surprising. <laughs> Take a drink. I got some sort of tickle in my throat. I find it pretty surprising. When I find a lot of business owners who are taking money from their business to make investments in other people's companies <laughs> through mutual funds and, and 401k programs and SEP IRAs and whatnot, um, you know, those, those were, no one's really gotten extraordinarily wealthy doing that. Your best investment is always you and what you can do in your business. And so taking money from the business, taking it and locking it away for the future. I find it to be a very difficult pill to swallow because we're all, if we're business owners, we're already taking enough risk as is just in the nature of our business. I don't want to go put my money at risk and see it get eaten away by some sort of recession or depression or pandemic or whatever it is at the time that I want to retire. So you can typically find uh, a, a reason to use policies to build the wealth. And then and that kind of flows into the second the second use for, for a business is to fund his own tax-free retirement plan, you could say, using these policies, but to do so by financing everything you need inside the business. I think it's one of the most beautiful things once you really catch it, that, hey, if I, all I need to do is build policies and use them in my business and rotate money in and out of them, and over a period of time, as we saw with the equipment, as we saw with the commercial property, I'm going to have a huge amount of money that's all growing tax-free that was 100% accessible to me at all times. And I never had to, to lose access to it whatsoever. And uh, I, I get rich financing your business. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do. And so uh, it, it can be, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a, some people would say, Nate, like, well, why would I put money in the policy? I can make a higher rate of return doing this. Or, you know, what if I can get a lower interest rate 
um, from a loan somewhere else. And, and although I, I'm not here, I, I could dispute some things. I could agree with some things. But all I'm trying to really bring from my own personal experience is the simplicity of just knowing that I'm in control of all the money. I'm in control of my own loan terms. And I know and I can see on paper guaranteed schedules of how wealthy uh, I will become by using this system. I don't have, it's a, it's a proven system. It's one that works. There's no outside uh, impact to it. And so, yeah, I mean, you may be able to get a higher rate of return doing something else. You may be able to do some other things like that. And honestly, we've shown uh, in webinars how to, do, how to do so with policies. But besides the point, at the end of the day, this is a tried and true way to get wealthy that you're in total control the entire time. And as a business, I know for me, being in business, I love being in control. <laughs> that's, that's one of the reasons why we start our own. We want to be the boss. And I like to be the boss of the money too. One thing that uh, a lot more individuals are starting to find is that you can actually offer 401k style programs or, or employee retention style pro- programs to your, uh, to your top employees funded through these policies. And so we, we can, uh, we can talk, I may have to do a webinar just on this, but I, I know a lot of individuals, I don't know too many uh, business owners who love their 401k or, or employees who do. And you can set up uh, similar style systems using these policies. But the nice thing about it is that they're non-qualified which means that you can discriminate. You can do things for certain employees that you don't have to do for all the employees like you would in a, uh, you know, a, a qualified retirement program. So there's a lot of cool things, whether it, it is kind of matching contributions to a policy while they're employed or whether it's you know, funding a uh, uh, defined benefit pension uh, program for, for your top employees, especially works well if you have really high performers or other associate doctors or or dentists or other things like that, that you really do try it. You really want to keep as best you can. Um, it it may be a little bit more, put more money, but it's what's interesting about some of those programs, especially the ones where you're, uh, in, you know, going to fund maybe a pension for them in the future or something like that for like 10 years, a set stream of income after they retire. The nice thing is you actually get to own the policy. Personally, you get to own the policy and use it the entire time to fund your business. And then at the end of the day, be able to fund the pension. So there's, there can be a win-win situation for both of you. And one thing that we did mention as well is as a business owner, we have to set a money aside to pay for our taxes. It doesn't get taken out of a paycheck. So we, uh, depending on how profitable, income tax could be quite a large amount of money between <coughs> self-employment taxes, between uh, uh, state, you know, property tax, between income tax, quite a bit of taxation that we can use policies to pay for and actually make a profit on. There could be so many other things uh, to, to discuss in this. As I mentioned, there, I, I had to try to nail it down as best I could to, to, to what the most profitable thing would be. And I really do feel like saving money on taxes is something we all want to do. And so with that, I hope this was a, a great moment, a great webinar for you. It was a pleasure to be here. I feel like I'm getting an itch in my throat, so I'm going to have to stop talking for a moment. <laughs> but with that being said, I am going to open up for, to, for some questions. So if you guys have questions or a chat, please let me know. I will be happy to answer it. I got one question with that. The employer can still match with a whole life insurance versus using a 401k. Uh, yeah, an employer can, can, you can match. It's more of a private contract between you and the employee. It's not as much of a, uh, you know, like a qualified retirement system. But yeah, I mean, if you, it's essentially just a contract between you and the employee. And that's what it would be with most of these non-qualified programs. Um, you just get into a, um, an agreement uh, between you and them to, um, you know, fund the 401k. So it would count. It's always going to be like a 401k. It's a tax deferred system with the policy. It's more like a Roth style system where they're, they're going to have to claim income tax. They don't get a deduction for paying the premiums. Just like if you had a Roth 401k or something like that, you wouldn't get to deduct the contributions. So, I mean, it would be taxable to them, just like a Roth 401k contribution would be taxed. Well, you know, wouldn't get a deduction for it. But yeah, it, it, it's nice because it's not, you, you can offer different things for different employees depending on uh, what you want to do. Let's see what else? What does the CPA need to know to avoid pushing back on the deduction of the interest paid back to the insurance company? Great question. 
what does a CPA need to know? We actually have some paperwork where we hired a CPA to write an opinion letter uh, describing the, the areas in the tax code that would um, qualify life insurance loans, life insurance policy loans, and the interest to be a, a deduction. And so we can send those to you uh, if you need them to share with your accountant. That would probably be the easiest way to get them on board to understanding why it works and why they're allowed to do that. And once they catch the quick logic of it, they're pretty, they're pretty well understanding what it's going to, what it's going to do. Uh, another question, does a business owner have insurable interest in all employees or only certain key employees? Honestly, a business owner would probably have an insurable, insurable interest to some degree in all employees, but how much, uh, how big of a policy they would let you write on an employee or get on an employee would be determined by how much, um, and by how much they're getting paid, uh, their, their real value to the, to the business in that manner. Another question, do you have to wait five years before you start loaning money from your policy? No, you do not. You do not. And most of our clients take a loan within the first, <clears throat> honestly, 30 days of owning a policy. So just like in all those examples that you saw, there's a lot of cash value available to use in those policies. Um, we just chose not to use it until we were done paying premiums just to make it simpler. But in reality, nobody really does that. Everyone uses the money right away as soon as they could. Um, another question, would you suggest having a business and a personal segregated account? That is a good question. Um, you know, I, I, would say, I would say yes. Um, I would say that, in fact, it's more important to have a business segregated account uh, to streamline and keep a paper trail for the loans you've made and the repayments you've made and keep all of, all of that separate. Uh, I think it would make sense to have a business. But once again, that account is actually a personal account. We're just going to earmark it for funds that are going to go to the business. Yeah, it's not actually a business account in and of itself. Very good. Any other questions, guys, before we close it down? Well, all right. Well, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, it really was a pleasure. I hope it, it was beneficial to you. There's more to cover, so I'm sure we'll have to do a couple more webinars in the future, but I do hope this was valuable to you, and we will catch you on our next webinar. Have a great day.